Today we're going to see how fast we can create a blog with Blazor Spark. Let's go. First, let's create our new Spark project with the Spark new command. And we're going to use the Pico CSS framework. We can CD into our app and open it with Visual Studio. So once this opens, the first thing I'm going to do is update my env file. So by default, Spark sets up SQLite. We're going to change that to MySQL. And then we're going to name our database Healthy Tips. We already have our uh, author, auth authentication models for users and roles set up. So let's go ahead and run our migrations. So we'll do the Spark Make Migration command. And we'll just call this initial since it's just setting up our initial tables. And then we'll go ahead and run those migrations. And that should create our database since it didn't exist and also the tables that were a part of the migration. So there's our healthy tips. We have our users and roles. Let's go ahead and run the app real quick just to see what it looks like. Okay, we have our default homepage. We can register a new user. Since Spark has all of this set up for us already, we can create our account and then we are logged in. Okay, perfect. So the first thing I wanna do is update the homepage. So let's go ahead and go to our pages, index.razor file. I wanna change this. So this will be like our blog feed, so like recent posts and then I want to make a new what do I want to do here so for each blog post I want a new article um, which means we need an articles model and database table so let's go ahead and get that set up uh, we can run the spark make model command and we'll call this article and that should be set up in our models and then we need to set up our columns. So we'll have a title. We will have a the content of the blog post. I also want to make a, uh, a slug. This will be a slug of the title to make the URL friendly. So instead of it be so instead of being like article slash one as in one the ID of the article It'll be slash, you know, whatever the title is, like some dash title. And then finally, we need uh, the user ID of the user that created this and a virtual field for the user so we can pull that user information from our entity framework queries. Uh, so this, sets, this extends a base model. Uh, that's part of the Spark library. So this already sets up your ID and your created and updated at fields. So we're good to go here. Let's go ahead and run a quick migration. So we'll do Spark make migration and then create article table. Oop. Before we do that, I need to add that to our DB context or nothing will happen. So let's go ahead and set that up. Always name this plural for our DB set. Now we can create our migration. Run our migration. So we should have an articles table now, and then in our structure, we should be referencing the user ID, which we are. Perfect. Okay, so back to our index.razor, we want to show all our articles here. So the first thing we need to do is pull in our DB context factory. And then we're going to want to run a query here to pull our, all of our articles. So let's set up a new property for that, just a list of articles. And then we need to remove the logger. 
we'll say using var db equals factory dot db context. So we'll get a new, uh, <clears throat> we'll get our db context, and then we can run our entity, our link query to pull all of our articles. We will tell it to include the user since it's attached to the articles table because we're going to we want to show who the author is yeah and then we want to order by descending created created at dates so we show the new post first and then we'll just turn that to a to list okay so now we need to display these but I'm gonna I'm gonna put like the article preview into a component. So I'm gonna say spark make component, and then I'll call this article preview. I should spell that right. So in our shared folder, we should see the article preview now. Okay, so each article should be in an article HTML tag. And then I guess before I put any more markup in here, let's do a couple things. We need a parameter for the article. I'm saying article a lot, so sorry if I'm confusing you. But we need to pass the, the single article model into this component. And then we need to display it. So we need the, we're gonna do an H group. This is just Pico stuff. Pico CSS stuff, so don't get intimidated. It's not part of Spark's internal framework. Although Spark does set up Pico or Tailwind or Bootstrap, whatever you're looking for. Um, and then we want to display the username. And then I'm going to dis also display the uh, created at date. So that should give most of the information we need with a preview. Oh, we also need to. Uh, we also need to display the content <laughs> of the of the blog post. So this would be article dot content, and then I also want to set up. Let's see, we need links to view view like the the full article, even though we don't have these set up these pages set up yet. I'm gonna go ahead and set the links up and we will set the pages up after this so we want to view it and we also want to be able to uh, edit it if the user is logged in so we'll use the authorized tag that comes with blazor out of the box this isn't a spark thing it's already included in blazor and then i'm just gonna add a dash here to split these links up when they're side by side and then Let's see, this would be slash articles, slash, and then the article ID, slash edit. Okay. And then what else do we need? That should be good for now. So in our home page, let's go ahead and uh, loop through our articles. So we'll do a for each of each article in articles. And then we can call our article preview and pass in that single article. And that, that should all be set up. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, do I have a user? I have a user already set up. So I'm just gonna put an article in here real quick. Uh, we'll call it test article our slug will be test article and then just random content put our user ID in and then our created at let's go ahead and let's fire up our app now perfect all right there's our article so next thing I want to do is set up the uh, created page. So we can do that without stopping our app. I only want people logged in to be able to create an article. So once again, I'm gonna reach for the authorized view tag. And 
then we'll have a new link and this will be articles slash create. Now we need to create a new page. So, uh, where, where'd I go here? Yeah, we'll go ahead and stop this. Say spark make page articles slash create. Okay, so we should have a new folder here with articles and then our create page. Already have our URL set up for us. I'm gonna cheat a little bit. Include all of these things. So we're saying we only want authorized or authenticated people to view this page. So anybody not logged in cannot view this page. We want to pass in our DB context, or our, sorry, our DB factory, so we can create a DB context, and then our navigation manager will use that when they submit the form to create the article. We'll navigate back to the home page. So let's start writing our markup. We'll have a section, an H1 tag, just explaining what we're doing here, and then do an article, which with Pico will give us a card on the page. Now we need to set up a edit form. I don't have any of this stuff set up yet, so I will need to do that. We'll need a model and we'll need a on submit handler. So for our model, we'll need uh, a new article object. And then we can plug that into our edit form model. And then we'll also need a create article method. And we'll call that on submit. So let's set up the rest of our fields here. We'll have our title. And then we need to bind our input text field here to the title. So new article dot title, and then that should be good there. We'll need a label for the content. And then we'll want a input text area for this. We'll bind our value to the new article dot content. And then we'll set our rows to maybe 10, so it's a little bigger. And then for our button, just need a type of submit. And then tell it to say create. Okay, now, <clears throat> now for this create article submit handler, we need to do a couple things. One, we need the user ID, since when we save an article, we have to tie it to a user. Um, we can, let's see, so Spark's main layout sets up ca cascading values. So it'll pass this user property down to any child component or pages. So we can leverage that here. Um, we'll add a cascading parameter for the layout. And then within that layout, we'll pull the user set up. And since we're on a page with the authorized attribute, Anybody on this page is already going to be logged in, so we know this user is going to be populated. Shouldn't be worried, too worried about that. All right, so let's set our new article dot user ID equal to that cascading user parameter, and then we have that slug field, which is the title turned into a URL slug. Uh, Spark comes with quite a few out-of-the-box extension methods, and one of those is the toSlug method for strings. So we can easily handle that. And then let's get our DB context. And then normally you would add this to the user's DB set this this object to the user DB set and then set like the created date to date time now and then tell it to save but spark comes with some extension method methods for uh, DB sets and it essentially does all that for you in one line of code so this save is adding it 
to the DB set of articles. It's setting the created at date and then it's saving for you all in one. And then finally, we need to navigate to the home page. Okay, let's go ahead and give that a try. All right, there's our create new article. We see it because we're logged in. Um, I'm actually going to cheat. Oops. And we're going to use chat TV GPT to uh, write a title and one paragraph but, uh, but article on eating healthy vegetables. Because don't we all just love vegetables? Broccoli, am I right? Okay, so we have our title. Go ahead and add that over here. That is going to be a very large. We'll we'll cut that down. That that would be a very large uh, slug. And then our content, and we'll hit create, and there it is. We have our blog post, and we can view it. No, we can't. Why can't we view it? Uh, let's see, embracing. Oh, we haven't actually created our show page yet. So I guess that's a good transition to do that. Let's create our show page so we can view the article. One thing I wanna do before that, uh, this should be a, a preview of the blog post, not the full blog post itself. So let's go ahead and change that back in our article preview. So let's add the extension method of clamp to our content here. And then this will clamp it to a certain amount of characters and then add ellipses on the end. So now we shouldn't see the full article on the previews. We should only see the first 250 characters. Let's double check. Okay, much better. So now, so now we only see the preview. Okay. All right, next, let's uh, make a new page, Spark, make page, articles slash uh, show. Go to our show page. We'll need, once again, a couple things. We will need our DB context factory and the navigation manager and then we need to update this to accept our slug for the article we'll also add our page title for the article so article.title so that'll change the title in the browser but first we need to accept a couple parameters let's see here so we need to accept the parameter of slug And we also need a article model or object. So when this page loads, we need to retrieve the article from the slug. So let's get a DB context from our factory and then set our article object to the result of a link query we're once again gonna do an include so we can get that user and then we want to say where the uh, slug column equals our slug property and then we're just gonna get the first result okay now we need to display our art our article so let's go to our article preview we can pretty much copy all of this get rid of this edit and view and then we'll get rid of the clamp we don't need that okay let's go ahead and run our app real quick do a dotnet watch 
make sure this is all working correctly. Okay, then we view, we see the full article. Perfect. Okay, the last thing we need to do is set up our, our edit page. So let me, I'm gonna pull up another command prompt so I don't have to keep stopping and starting. Okay, so let's do spark make page articles slash edit. And we'll come to our edit page. Once again, we need to do a, inject a couple things. First, we, we only want to authorize people to see this. We only, we want to inject our factory. We want to inject the navigation manager. And then for our URL, we want to set up a parameter again. We don't need to worry about the slug since we don't care if the edit page is SEO friendly. And then we'll need, uh, down here we'll need another parameter. This will be our ID from the URL. And then we also need an article object that we will use a link query passing in the ID to fill. So let's get our DB context. set our, our our article to db dot articles and then we can just use the find method in any framework we don't need the the user we we can get the user from the logged in user when we go to save so and actually it'll it, the user id will already be attached to this article when we save so we don't need to worry about that all right, let's set up, before we set up our markup, let's just real quick set up our, our uh, handler. So we'll call this edit article. Actually save article would probably be better. And then set up h1 tag. And then we again need to make an edit form with a model of article and then a on submit handler of save article. We should be able to pr uh, pretty much copy this over here and we'll call this save not create to avoid confusion. Okay, and then in our save article handler, we need to get our DB context We need to get our uh, slug based on the title. Just in case the user edits the title, we want to update the slug as well. And then we can call the extension method of save on the articles DB set. Uh, this extension method detects if it's an existing record, so it knows to do an update instead of adding a new record to the database pretty handy and then we will navigate to the home page let me double check everything here and then did we add the did we add the edit we did add the edit okay so let's go ahead and just oh we have an error uh, cannot are we running already oh I am running already uh, <laughs> Let's go ahead and stop that and start it again. Okay. So let's, for testing, actually, let's go ahead and we can view still. Let's edit this. We'll just add a quick updated. And if I view that again, all right, that all looks good. So our updates are working good. Let's do it again. This one's a test article. Save. Okay, now let's let's log out and then register as someone else. And we can test to make sure we're not able to 
update other people's blog posts. And it looks like we can. So we need, we need to fix that. Uh, let's go back to our healthy tips. Edit. Okay, so we need to test if the current logged in user's ID equals the ID attached to the article right here. So once again, we can pull in this cascading parameter and then we can set up an if statement, set user.id equals the article.userid. Then we'll show the edit page link. Okay. Got errors, hope it's building. Okay, perfect. Now I, can, I cannot see the edit. So let's create a new article by Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, once again, I'll just go, I'll cheat, go to chat GPT. There's our title. content create okay all right that was pretty fast it probably came in around 20 to 25 minutes uh, thanks for watching if you're interested in blazer spark please go to uh, blazerspark.com and check out the framework the docs are have a lot of examples and go through everything about it there's tons we didn't cover in this tutorial but it was fun to make thanks for tuning in bye